In this episode, Sean and I installed the Z-bracket, Z-bar, all the linkages on the 70 Charger project, and uh, I'll show you how not to do it, because it whooped our ass. Stick around. So, working on trying to get the clutch pedal together. This is kind of the rough layout of what we have, just a bunch of miscellaneous parts. So I have the actual bracket, I have a rebuild kit, I have two different actual brackets I need to mount, uh, only one of which needs to go, this is an aftermarket one, here's an OEM one. Um, now we're trying to get everything actually roughly assembled, and it's a struggle. So what we've learned off of doing one, uh, trying to get the actual ball, grease it, get this in a heat so it's going to warm up quite a bit. So the ball in the uh, in a vice grip or something that's going to stabilize it, and then absolutely dislocate your thumbs trying to get this thing pushed down. It is ridiculous. All right, we'll see you guys later. Have a good night. You got it. Gotta heat that thing. Yeah. Gotta heat it like this one. I guess so. So as I'm dropping this down, I'm looking through the weak hole that's here. It's just a little peak hole that actually will be for the clip, but you can watch as you push it down and see when the groove is where it's supposed to be, which is right there. So you can see when this clip will actually fully clip in, and this is how it's held on onto that bracket here. So, once it's complete, it looks something similar. And you should not be able to pull the end out. That's going to be that. This part is the part that ends up bolting to the bracket. So, that bracket watch be like so. And there. So, that should be that. And it should have washer and bolt. Like so. That gives me a pivot point once I tighten it down. Preferring it being able to spin left to right without actually lifting up off the bracket. And uh, in case you noticed, I'm looking at just a basic diagram to try to figure out which one's which, where everything goes. Now it's angled. I don't know which way it angles yet. So in case you haven't noticed, we always put it on one way and we'll go from there. If I need to flip it around, I always can. We're just trying to get it roughly where I need to. I got a spring washer that then I have to Put in on the back side to hold that. All right, adjusting nut, washer, and insulator. aren't that rich so <laughs> It's 
It's gotta anchor somewhere solid, no? Like the frame just has to pull up against something yeah. or release it. It's gonna have to. Because it can't pull up against the linkage because that would be, would be pointless. Spring washer on the back side. Yeah, that's it. All right, so we're back over at the car now. We're trying to get it dropped in. And we're running into a couple little issues. It would help a lot if I had put so much crap inside the UV already. But we're gonna figure it out. So right now, the top of the Z-bar needs to pivot 90 degrees, which isn't gonna happen with us having the pedal rod connected. So we're gonna pull it back out, pull the pedal rod off, drop it back in and rotate it how we need to, figure out where the Z-bar bracket needs to be welded, and then go from there, mark it, pull the Z-bar back out, and then go in and weld the bracket in. So that way we can re-put in the Z-bar with the pedal, but we need to line up it first completely mocked up to make sure that it's not too far forward, too far back, left, right, and all matches up. So we pretty much have to install it once to mark it, to uninstall it, to weld it, to reinstall it. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a lot of work at all, but we should go quick. <laughs> So underneath the car, trying to get this to line up, trying to figure out if we need which of the mounting holes we're needing on the Lakewood bell housing. So here's that Z-bar. The brackets that it will, the ball will go into one of these here holes. It's hard to see, but it's red one where my finger is. And then in turn, that will go there. This connecting rod actually will stick out here, come back in through here. All right, so we ended up pulling the ball off though. For two reasons, number one, I wanna make sure, well, Sean's pretty adamant. We should tap out, get the thread size for this first and make sure that the thread size is going to work on the bell housing. And also to clean them out because the bell housing was used and honestly, I agree with him, there's not many threads that are visible. They're not very well threaded. So rather than us putting this in and then either cross stripping where we need to put it on the bell housing or cross stripping one of these, this is irrelevant, but the, I'm not pulling that bell housing off. I'll weld it, I don't care. Yeah, it's not coming out. Send it. Dude, I just throw a beater on it and call it a day. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I ain't pulling that again. <laughs> I don't blame you. So let's do it right the first time. <laughs> so we're gonna go get some threads on this and figure out what it is, and then run another probably tap through the uh, bell housing. Six Look at that. That mates up beautifully. All right. So let's try that. Here's a quick cut. I was trying to record what we're doing underneath this car. Because of how much stuff's in here, it is damn near impossible to get the Z bracket in. We're doing it, but it has legitimately taken us probably five hours to probably get to where we are. And we still haven't welded it yet. We just got everything in and mocked up, and now we're going to try to weld it in place. I don't know if it's gonna work. I'll try to kind of walk you guys through what we've had to do so far. So right there you can see, right where my phone kind of is pointing, it's gonna be right here. That's gonna be one end of the Z-bar that's sticking out. Right now we don't have the washer and the nut on it. However, 
what you can see, let's bring it a little bit closer here, it's kind of how it's going to be situated in there. So that part's going to be accessible from the driver's side fender well. Now, the pedal is a little bit different as well. Bringing you inside the car here, you'll have your pedal rod, which is here, linked up. That bend is not in the middle. So the bend that actually cuts through the firewall here, which is right here, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but right here, there's a bend, there's a bend in that rod. It is not the center, it is a one-way only, it's a one-way directional, I guess you could say. And it needs to be done the correct way. Putting it on incorrectly, it'll rub on the side of the firewall. Correctly, it should go straight through the center. So Sean's not busting out his welder, because my little peasant welder back in the corner we can't be running that. So, <laughs> and then my power up in here. All right. Mole power go better. Mole power. I'm around with that. <laughs> That's what that means up in the law right there, mole power. All right. So other than that, we have that bracket going across. The bracket that I have that goes into my Lakewood bell housing, or I should say the, the hole, we ended up cutting off probably five, uh, five threads off of, give or take and had to retap it to make sure that we got it on. Um, but we put that on first, mounted the Z-bar itself, attached the bracket on the, or the, the ball on the driver's side fender well, and then went through and positioned the bracket where we needed to. Now we're going to weld it into place because now that we know that it's not gonna move, one of us moves the pedal, it's moving the clutch as we need to. We'll line it up as we need to off of an image that you can find online and send it. Because honestly, I don't think we're gonna be able to get any better than this. Hopefully it's gonna fully disengage that clutch, otherwise I'm gonna be burning through like thousand dollar clutches every week, so no pressure. All right, so underneath the car, this is how the in inside of the bracket's gonna look like. So you have your, uh, I have a Lakewood scatter shield that I'm running, however, you'll probably have a stock bell housing or you can run something similar to this. Um, this inner bolt, way up here, way up here, was the one that we had to cut down. Looking at it from here, sure there's supposed to be a retaining nut back here, I'll have to find that. However, the turn spring and the bracket, it's gonna be hooked up with your clutch fork rod, which is this here, connecting over. So it's kind of a pain. I'm not gonna lie, this took us way too long to do. All right, so now I'm gonna drop the front of the car and hit what I can in the front with chassis black, try to get some of the exposed metal not exposed, go from there. But realistically, I'm just about done. Well, we're just about done, because it's been how many hours? Um, too many. <laughs> like I, let's see, we were started working on this. We were working on this when Joey left. That was probably about six, so Maybe seven. seven. That clock doesn't work. So seven o'clock. It's now one one twenty-five in the morning. Of course, I mean it doesn't help that we hit every roadblock along the way possible. Don't do this with headers in. <laughs> Don't do this with a brake booster in. Uh, if you can, just do this when nothing's inside. A wheel and a fender off probably would have helped too. A wheel and a fender. welding that bracket. Just every, if that everything fender just was gone, it would have made it a lot more accessible. Get as much of this out of the way as you can. Yeah. Because it's painful. But let's get it painted. That's going to be it right now for the 70 Charger. I'm going to continue working on this as best I can. Uh, I have a lot of other projects. But hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of an idea if you guys are doing a four-speed swap or trying to set up 
uh, a car that was stripped like mine, what to expect and what you're going to have to put in uh, for the Z-Bar itself. There's quite a few document uh, uh, web forms that post question and answers on it, but some people just want to see a little visualization, uh, maybe what it takes to have to actually get into it. Uh, I'll, I'm going to try to do what I can to edit as best as I can on how much work it took. Um, it's not hard, it's just a lot of problem solving for me. Get the brake booster out of the way, get the headers out of the way, do everything you can to clear up as much space as you can in that one area, because I'll tell you what, it's cramped. And uh, thank God, Sean had the larger welder. My little 140 probably would not have done nearly as good doing deep penetration on, that, uh, on the metal in order for those welds to stick as well as they did. So, do what you can, but get all that stuff out of the way. But if you guys like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe. You can tell, uh, just tell me what you want me to try to show you what I'm doing on this car, and that way I try to make a video on it. Until then, keep building.